Thank you very much for organizing this webinar. Uh, it is my great pleasure to report our recent progress. Uh, uh, that work is funded by NSF Rapid uh, Program. Uh, so I'm Xifeng Yan from UCSB. And uh, the goal of this project is uh, uh, going to forecast uh, the daily new cases, uh, hospitalizations, and deaths uh, across the United States for COVID-19 and disease. Uh, this work was collaborated with my PhD student, uh, Xiao Yongjing, and Professor Yuxiang Wang, um, both of them are from uh, UCSB. Uh, as we can see that uh, the number of daily new cases uh, uh, recently increased uh, dramatically. Uh, it is concerning us. And furthermore, the number of daily uh, new deaths uh, increased dramatically across the world. Uh, it sends us uh, an alert. And our goal is to uh, try to do the forecasting of those uh, daily cases and deaths. And we believe this kind of forecasting would be very useful for uh, local decision makers, uh, for hospitals, uh, for our governments. Uh, there are many factors that are related to uh, the number of COVID-19 cases and deaths. Uh, there are so many different factors. Uh, for example, demographic uh, factors. Uh, population density in a county, in a state, in a city, uh, local business structures, uh, social culture, uh, psychology uh, uh, factors, uh, and the interventional policies. All of those factors have a kind of influences on the uh, contact ratio among people, uh, then on the infection ratio uh, among the people. And these two numbers are going to uh, infect uh, the number of uh, impact, the number of uh, hospitalizations, uh, the number of ICU beds used for COVID-19 uh, patients. And in the end, they are going to influence the number of deaths. And furthermore, all of these numbers are influenced by the, uh, the disease dynamics. Uh, the COVID-19 disease uh, evolve dynamically. And all of these numbers can be represented as uh, time series data the infection ratio, hospitalization, ICU, deaths. And as we know that uh, uh, time series analysis has been studied for decades, uh, there are many wonderful time series forecasting algorithms. However, in this work, we would like to do something different. We would like to uh, leverage the newest deep learning models and try to build a pure data-driven approach without assuming any kind of epidemic models. So our intuition is like follows. Uh, history repeats itself. Like different regions uh, share the COVID-19 and, uh, and trending patterns as the spreading rate uh, is usually determined by uh, common factors such as social interactions, protections, uh, intervention policies. For example, if you want to forecast the situation of the United States, you can refer Germany, France, Italy, and learn a lot. In order to forecast the cases in a certain region, uh, we actually can refer to these uh, other regions uh, where pandemic starts uh, uh, much earlier and just learn from uh, their experience. So this is the intuition behind uh, our model. So let me use uh, one slide uh, to uh, very briefly introduce this intuition. And actually this is called attention mechanism in deep learning and uh, nowadays a very successful model uh, in natural language processing in models also uh, sequencing uh, sequence patterns. Uh, suppose we would like to forecast uh, the uh, new cases in California. What we can do is we try to refer the, uh, the, the, the similar situations in other states across the United States. And we uh, uh, regard these uh, states as reference states. And then we can compare the current uh, window in California and compare with historical windows in uh, different states and try to find those uh, historical windows that share uh, the similar trend. And then we can use the follow-up trend to forecast the future cases in California. Of course, you needed to do a kind of waiting. So this is where the deep learning take place. And then we can just do this work again, again. That's it. And uh, you move the window and check the similarity among this window and weight different similarities. And then using the follow-up uh, chance to forecast the future cases uh, uh, in California. And you can do it for the daily new cases. You can do it for hospitalizations. You can do it for the number of uh, deaths. 
And it turns out that this simple model uh, purely built on the uh, uh, data actually can achieve top performance without using any kind of SIR, SEIR model. As you know that these models are leading epidemic models, which can help us to understand the disease spreading patterns. So it is a little bit surprising to us. Uh, we can achieve quite a good forecasting results, uh, at least compared with uh, those models without understanding the underlying uh, disease spreading patterns. Uh, so this uh, uh, slide gives you a, a kind of summarization and results uh, delivered by uh, leading groups uh, uh, across the United States. Uh, these groups send those forecasting results to CDC and the CDC archive those results so that later we can compare the, the accuracy of those algorithms. And as you can see that our algorithm called ACTS uh, across uh, uh, time series uh, uh, forecasting actually can achieve uh, quite a good performance. Uh, these numbers actually measured uh, using uh, WAP is the weighted absolute percentage errors. And use the same model, we can do the uh, new cases forecasting, uh, hospitalization forecasting and death forecasting. And we do the forecasting in the state level. But if there's a need, we actually can do it in the county uh, level if the data is uh, available. Uh, so this is quite a surprising result. And uh, currently uh, we are communicating with CDC actually next uh, uh, Tuesday, there is a meeting in CDC and we are going to present this result uh, to a group of uh, experts uh, working in this domain. And we are quite new to this area and uh, we are not experts in time series uh, analysis. Our result is available in the following uh, uh, web link. Uh, we just uh, submit a paper in archive.org so that it can be shared with uh, uh, researchers uh, much earlier. And we also publish our uh, uh, forecasting results uh, in this website. And the re result has been sent to uh, CDC. So this is it uh, for our work. And thank you for, for your time.